Hello and welcome! We have another art video to talk about. So in the last few years I've noticed that I've taken a liking to working with canvas. Now normally I have my sketchbooks that I work on or I've taken a liking to wood burning in the last decade I think. But canvas for some reason seems to be my favorite. I've uh, done a couple of canvas pieces and I know y'all know about the others. But I undertook a project for my stepdad. He is an absolute minion fanatic. I, I, I've I never met anybody that loves minions more than he does, except for maybe me, maybe my stepmom. So, he's also a Whovian, like me. Yeah, I love Who. I, I love Doctor Who. So, I undertook this project of trying to mesh minions and Doctor Who, and I'll tell you something, it's not as easy as you might think, even with a creative mind, and you're thinking, well, what should I do? Should I make a minion dress up as, I don't know, David Tennant or Peter Capaldi? I mean, no, I wanted something that was a little bit more cohesive and minion-like. And the minions are rabbits. Rabbits? Are they called rabbits? Raving rabbits or something like that. Anyway, you know, they're real mischievous, they get into trouble, and they're just, they're, they're, they're like four-year-olds essentially. And I saw I saw the movies of Despicable Me, you know, they had the purple minions and everything, so I watched those with my son quite a few times because he loves minions too. I'm not sure he loves minions as much as Cal does, but he definitely loves minions. So I started off with just trying to figure out how to draw minions, for one, because I know they're like Tic Tacs, but you know, you want to make it look like an actual minion. And I figured, you know, what's the most iconic thing from Doctor Who? And every Whovian knows it's the damn TARDIS and the sonic screwdriver. You know, the Doctors change out, everything changes out, except for the outside of the box. And, well, the screwdriver changes, but, you know, it's, it's a sonic screwdriver in every single one. Well, except for the one time it really was a screwdriver. Anyway... So I figured maybe the minions stole the TARDIS. I'm not sure how exactly they would steal the TARDIS from the Doctor, but I figured I'd go with it. And considering the movies were pretty much based around the little girls, and the fact that the minions loved the little girls, and the little girls loved the minions, I figured doing something childlike would be more entertaining. So I figured I would draw up a canvas, uh, or I'd draw up a, you know, this piece of basically the minions stealing the TARDIS and repainting it and, you know, just, just creating havoc around it. Now, I ended up not having a whole lot of the minions wreaking havoc as much as I did them just kind of being there. Like, this is a normal, everyday thing for them to just, hey, we're going to steal the TARDIS today. So I figured... I wanted foreground and background, and I wanted it to look like it would. It had some distance to it. Now, I'm not great at creating hyper-realistic things. It's just never been something I've been able to do. If I really focus, I can get it to look somewhat realistic, but never hyper-realistic. And what I started working on with the with the with this picture is I was using my Prismacolor markers. I love them, but they do not work well with canvas. As I started coloring the purple minion, I used multiple different types of colors. I used my Prismacolor markers, my Prismacolor pencils. On top of that, I also used highlighter. I've never used highlighter in artwork before, but in this sense, it really kind of worked. It The Prismacolor markers seem to give everything kind of like a a base color but when i went to walmart i was really looking for something a little different but that would work with canvas and i found crayola markers and i don't mean like crayola kids color markers i mean this is an art set made by crayola Cray crayola Ugh. this is what it came in now you can see what you can actually do with it you know apparently uh, I really like these markers, but they seem to be more for 
not, I don't want to say fine detail, but I guess essentially this kind of detail here or possibly lettering. These give canvas sort of a uh, watercolor feel. That's the best way I can describe it. And let me open it up here. Yeah, it's, it's they're dual tip markers and they're brush and detail is what it actually says on here. But I didn't get much of a brush feel for them as much as I did detail or lettering fine lines and stuff like that. And they've got, it's got a pretty good array of colors, but as you can see, the markers are fairly small. And I just happened to pull one out that's the same fucking color as my hair. Hang on. Um, let's, let's get the yellow one out. All right. So we've got both ends are really just damn tiny and they're the same size. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Okay. There you go. So they're not really good for much more than lettering or fine detail. I was able to get the markers to work. So I started I started working on the actual minions itself, the two foreground minions, which was the purple minion, and I don't think that's Bob. I think that's, uh, it's not Stuart. I believe Stuart's the tall one. Anyway, this is a pretty iconic minion because he's got the, you know, beetle, beetle, yeah, that thing. So I started working on them first, and I wanted to get them created because not only were they kind of the largest thing in the picture other than the TARDIS, but they were right in your face. I actually had to go pick up some paint pens to do the fine details of like the light shine on the little siren hat. I was able to get that done pretty well. Now, now the, the, the little minion sitting behind that minion, I believe is Bob because he's got two different colored eyes. And you can see in the very beginning, he looked like he had like the thousand yard stare. I had a lot of troubles getting, for some reason, getting his goggles to look right. I'm not sure why I had so much trouble with it, but I did. But after a little while working on the minions, I figured I'd start working on the TARDIS. Now, this was difficult because every Whovian knows the TARDIS is a specific color of blue. I mean, if you go to the store now, you can actually find a swatch of blue paint that is called TARDIS Blue. So when I'm working with like probably six different colors, a ranging of blue, from light to dark to flat to denim, you know, I was having a lot of trouble getting the TARDIS to look right, so I started layering the blue, and of course I went from lightest to darkest, so that way I wouldn't have too much of a fuck up. So I started working on one side of the TARDIS before I ended up going back to doing some minions and some line work on the TARDIS. So I was trying to get the, the minions finished because my yellow was really starting to beg for mercy. So I'd have to take a break, work on the TARDIS, and then go back to the minions. That way my, my yellows wouldn't dry out or anything like that because I was having to keep multiple open at one time because I was using the orange to not only shade, but I was using it to give them some dimension. So I was able to get most of the minions actually finished fairly quickly. I did this particular canvas in 48 hours flat from coming up with the idea to finishing it and covering it and we're good. 48 hours. Oh God, it was, it was time consuming, but I got it done. I don't understand it. You give me a week to work on something or just, okay, give me a month to work on something. It'll never get fucking done. Give me two weeks to work on something. It'll never get fucking done. Put me on a two to three day time frame and I have to get this big project done. I will get it done. I don't know why. I'm good in a crunch. So as I started working on the minions, I wanted it to seem fun and happy, but I wanted it to seem kind of serious and curious at the same time. I was having a lot of trouble with the minions actual eyes because I could get a lot of detail in the minions but then their eyes would fall flat. And I was having a lot of trouble with that, but I think I, I think in the end I actually got it down pretty well. I just had to add, the closer you get to the picture, the more alive you, they can seem, I guess. Uh, from a distance, it doesn't really look like their eyes have much detail. So I ended up going back and working on the TARDIS before I worked on anything else after I finished the Minions. I was going to have the Minions painting it like yellow, but I figured 
you know, that's a little too on the nose. I didn't want the, I didn't want everything in the picture to be yellow. Well, then I started thinking about, well, if you're putting something yellow on something blue, it's going to initially turn green. Because even when you're painting a wall, if you don't have a primer and you're putting yellow over blue, it's going to turn green. But that, again, seemed a little on the nose. I'm not sure why. And then I, thought I started thinking about the actual movies. And the movies were more or less based on, you know, the girls, not just Gru. So I started thinking, well, the littlest girl, the smallest girl, I forgot what her name is, but she had a thing for unicorns and pink and fluffy. She was like the ultimate psycho girly girl. So I figured, what if the minions were painting it pink? And I started thinking, okay, well, pink could work, but I didn't want it to be like pink. So I started using a range of pinks and light purples and was able to come up with like this fuchsia color. And I was able to kind of make it look like the minions were actually painting it, you know, instead of having just half of it done or a third of it done. It took some fine detail work, but I was able to get it to look like the minions were painting it. I even added the little girl minion like in the background back there. It, it This was really a fun project to work on, but once I finished with the minions, I started having some real inspiration issues with trying to figure out what the hell do I do with the background. Size ratio was really my biggest concern because the minions only come up to what Gru's knees, I believe. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe Gru is fairly tall. I do believe that the woman, the, the, the mom in the second movie, I believe the minions come up to like her mid-thigh. So that gives me a pretty good range of idea of where and how tall the minions are. And some minions are taller than others. Like I believe Stuart is the name of the tall minion. And he's like the tallest of the minions and that's why I've kind of got him at the bottom of this little minion stack trying to hold the minions up that's why I've got him at the bottom of it I know there's only like three or four minions that actually have a name and obviously I didn't want to rinse and repeat having like the same three minions all over the picture so I tried to make the minions look instrumentally different without making it seem quite obvious that I wasn't drawing an actual minion I have seen a few pictures of what is, I guess, supposed to be Bob, because he's the one with the dual goggles, or the, you know, an actual set of goggles. I don't know why I said dual goggles. He's not a Cyclops. So, I've seen some pictures of the Bob minion being a bit rounder. Like, he's just, he's the little chubby minion. And I've seen some where he, honest to God, just looks like a really short Tic Tac. So, I tried to make them look more different than uniform because I didn't want it to look like I was using the same three minions, you know, throughout the entire thing. So when I started working on the background, I was really trying to take in size ratio because some of these minions are taller than others. I know Bob, I think, is supposed to be the shortest, I believe. And compared to the TARDIS, I was trying to put in, like in my head, I was overcomplicating and I was like, how old, how tall is Peter Capaldi and David Tennant and Matt Smith? Okay, if I've got a range in there of just the average height between the three of them, because I don't particularly care for Christopher Eccleston, I just kind of push him to the background. I try to figure out, okay, so in comparison to a real person like David Tennant, how tall would Gru be? Needless to say, I didn't get very far with that thought. So I just tried my damned best to have their size be relative to how big the TARDIS is. Because I know they're relatively small. They're like children. So I started trying to work in the background with what I, I can try to feel as one of the labs that Gru has. I know his was more metal than anything else, and it had a lot of dark colors, but I wanted something to seem more happy. So I started working on the background with these markers. And needless to say, that's when I found out the hard way that they're more for lettering than they are brushing. But I did like the way that they made the background seem more watercolor 
than just flat marker. I really did. I liked that. Will I be doing that again with a large canvas piece? Probably not. That took a lot of time. It actually ended up taking more time than I thought it would. I wanted something to be interacting with the minions for the most part, so I figured maybe a little claw, because you had seen claws working in the first and second movie, kind of picking up the minions and stuff, and, you know, picking up other stuff. And I wanted to add the little minion in there that hugs the banana pile. And I love that little picture. So I put the little minion hugging the banana pile back there and I figured I would try to make it look like the crane arm was going to take the bananas from him. And I had wanted it to make it look big, like Gru built it, but it was also of relative size to the minions themselves. I've always been real good at fine details. And I do mean fine details. It's just like the dragon eye that I drew for, uh, or I drew on my tablet and I put up a video about it. The eye itself has so much detail that it can be considered realistic. But once I started drawing the rest of the dragon head, it just kind of fell flat. I don't know why I have so much trouble with large detail, but I do. I can do fine detail with no problem. So I was trying my damnedest to work in this watercolor type of feeling with shadowing. So I ended up using like blues for the base color of the back wall. And then I would add in dark blues and greens to kind of shadow it. And I wanted it to seem like it gradient, you know, it was a gradation of colors going to the top. And in all honesty, I probably should have done that green to the blue instead of the blue to the green. But I mean, it was way too far to fix it at this point. And the watercolor really worked in my, or the markers looking like watercolor really did come into my favor in working in the windows. I mean, I've done better, but I'm starting to learn that with an already sealed canvas, it wasn't a raw canvas, those mark, or any marker really, because I was using Sharpie, highlighter, Prismacolor markers, Prismacolor pencils, I, everything I could get my hand on, I was mixing it into this picture and it came out it came out good. The background was a little lackluster for me, but you know, every, you know, every artist's worst critic is themselves. I, I can't honestly tell you that there's a picture that I absolutely 100% actually did the right way the first time. Except for the Jessica Alpa picture. I will forever have a love-hate relationship with that picture. I ended up finishing the picture in 48 hours and I actually kind of liked it. Could I, do I really wish that I could have changed it? Yeah, would I have? Probably not, because in all of my, and I'm going to go ahead and point this out because it took Cal a little while to find it, and all of my pictures, no matter what portrait or picture it is, there's a fuck up, and I don't mean a little mistake, I mean there is a colossal fuck up in it somewhere, and I don't always notice it, but when I do, or Craig points it out to me, if it makes me laugh, I'll keep it there, intentionally. If it's really just not that damn funny and it doesn't make me laugh, I'll attempt to fix it. And a lot of times, even though they're colossal fuck-ups, they're relatively easy fixes. And in this case, the, the fuck-up was the lettering on the panel that says police box. It says public call, police box. I ended up putting pubic call. And I did not even realize that. In my defense, I was having a lot of trouble getting the lettering done right in that box because even though I went and bought a fine tip paint marker, I really should have had an ultra fine. And I wanted it to be readable, but apparently I just kind of missed the L going into the, to the lettering and I ended up putting pubic box in there. And I didn't realize it until I had finally said, okay, success, I have finished it. And I had Craig come over there and look at it and get his opinion on it. And he just started laughing. I was like, what are you What are you laughing at? You don't even like minions that much. So I started looking and sure enough, there it was right in my face, pubic box. And I just died laughing. And I was like, okay, I'll fix this. This will be an easy fix. Craig's like, no, 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 just leave it. Just leave it. Just leave it. See if they notice. I was like, you know what? Okay. I'll let that one be the colossal fuck up in this picture. I'm really proud of the way it looks painted. Like, they were trying to cover it up. I had to leave some blue spots, like, in there somewhere. And I actually tried to put in some areas where it looks like the paintbrush might have missed it. So, 
in the end, I really ended up loving this picture. Uh, there's a lot that could be fixed, but I think it gives it more character. There's a lot I would change about it, but I probably in the end would not end up changing it. I think in all honesty, my favorite part of doing this picture was the two minions in the very front. I tried to make it look like there was some type of weird confrontation between the two of them. And him doing the Beedo into the uh, bullhorn was like blowing, you know, air at the purple minion because you could tell that their limbs were like really wiggly and their hair was all weird and wild and stuff. So I really tried to make it look like those two minions were interacting with each other. I think the only thing I got super frustrated with is that the little Bob down there holding the sonic screwdriver looks like he has a thousand yard stare and the sonic screwdriver is kind of shitty looking. I could not get that thing to look like a sonic screwdriver to save my damn life. I I can draw a lot of things, and I've practiced drawing a lot of other things, but give me a simple stick that I have to color, and I can't damn well do it. I don't know why. So this was definitely a fun project. I The minions were very colorful as far as like their personalities go. Bringing personality to the eyes was really, it was a fun, it was a difficult fun thing to try and bring this childlike wonder to a little minion through its eyes. Because I was using a lot of pictures that people have seen a hundred times over, but I was making them work in a way that it told a story in the picture of where the minions stole the TARDIS. They don't know really what they're working with here, but it's mine now and I'm going to repaint it. Like the two minions on the side just kind of looking up at it like, wow, I wonder what this thing can do. You know, so it was a lot of fun to work on that. But in the end, he ended up loving the picture because I think he loves anything minions. <laughs> My mom though, God, I love her to death. I walked in with the picture and she said, what's with the box? Why do the minions have the box? Isn't that a Doctor Who thing? It's like, Mom, come on. Work with the idea of the picture here. The minions, what do they do? Cal walked in and he was like, I love it! I was like, see, that's the, that's, that's the reaction that I like. I don't, I don't think, I don't think our mom is as big a nerd as we are. I'm starting to learn that. I love my mom to death, but I don't think she's a huge nerd. Dork, maybe, but not, not a nerd. Don't worry, mom. Dork is not a bad thing. Because <laughs> I know you've probably, you know, this video has, is like uploaded and I guarantee you it's been like an hour since then and you have now seen this video. I promise you, mom, call me right now and I will tell you being a dork is not a bad thing. Or a nerd. It's not a bad thing, okay? I love you. And I love the rest of you too. And I will get up another video soon enough. Pray I can keep on schedule because we are trying to move. So, I love you all. Bye. I lost my train of thought. I don't know where it went.